Okay. Sure. I know I said I wasn't sure if we were going to be here later tonight or not, but um, husband got some time in with our friend. He had to go back to studying for more finals. So we're going to try to pop in and do this now. I was going to do some of the house chores that I needed to get done. However, the main house chore I need to do, I can't do until everybody's out of the way. So I need to shampoo a rug and I can't shampoo the rug until I'm sure people are done traipsing across it for the night so that nobody slips on the uh, kitchen floor after walking over the, uh, the rug to get out there. So, here we are. As we get back to work on this guy. Because, I don't know, like for some reason dates and I am just like, yeah, okay, it's this date. And, but then I saw a YouTube video last night, they're like, oh, it's two weeks till Christmas, and I'm like, oh, we've got to get this finished. We can't be, uh, dicking around here, so. I have to get the husband's other gift done. Or I need to try to, so. We'll try to see how far we can get on this. Don't know how far we'll get though. We'll see. Don't know if we'll quite get this done tonight on stream. I wanted to get this done on stream, but. Just don't know. Um, we do have the new Planet Zoo update that came out. Um, uh, early this morning. I was trying to say last night, and I'm like, no, no, it wasn't last night. For me, it was kind of last night, but technically it was early this morning. And then I was looking at the new guided tours thing and I'm like, how does this work? So I had to look up a video on that. Apparently there's a tutorial, supposedly. Um, in game for it, so I might have to take a peek at that. But that seems kind of fun. Looking at um, what all you can do and stuff with it, so. Should be rather interesting. I don't know if it would work better for smaller zoos. I mean, I think if you do a larger zoo, you're probably 
going to need to um, have a lot more rest breaks during it just because of all of the walking. I don't think they'll get on the uh, transport rides. I think those are considered a different entity. I could be wrong. I haven't looked at the potential tutorial yet. I didn't even realize there was a tutorial for it until I watched a different person's video on it last night. I was like, oh. Fascinating. So that's fun. Can't wait to get in there and work on that. So has anyone done a zoo that's like just exhibit animals? I'm curious. I'm sure some people have. Just didn't know how the um, guests would uh, handle that. You have a little bit of a thin spot right there. However, um, that's probably going to get covered with the black fuzz, fluff stuff. Because um, I'm going to be putting in a seating area. We'll probably just kind of let that split stay. Since we're going to put in the other color on there. Keep picking up like all these little fuzzes. Although that might have been already in there. No! The dinosaur tipped over. I got a little bit more work done on the dino last night. Not much. I was trying to farm in WoW. And the lag in Azure span was just so terrible. So terrible. No idea what was going on. Like some days it was bad for a little bit in small increments, like right before um, that stupid feast event would kick off. But last night, man, it was pretty much unplayable and that's where I wanted to farm so I was getting kind of pissy. I wasn't able to sit down to even try to farm until like 11, 11.30 last night because I had some other things that I had to do. So I was not amused to finally be able to sit down and to play and just, and it was server side lag, it wasn't on my end, my latency was fine. 
and it wasn't just me. There was other people in the zone experiencing the same thing, thinking it was them until all of us started chiming in. Like a three to five second delay, like sitting there and counting two, three, or five. Um, when you're trying to loot is bad enough, but then when you're trying to skin it, and then there's another five second delay from the time that your skinning cast ends to the time that your loot shows up. It's kind of ridiculous. And then when I was trying to kill stuff, my spells weren't going off the way they were supposed to be. There was huge delays with that. My pet was kind of running to where the mob was supposed to be at, but by the time it got there, the mob was already hitting me, and I'm like, what in the world is going on? Now, I haven't been back in since, uh, maintenance today. So. Meow, what? What? She's, she's mad at you for something. I know. I know. I'm not here paying attention to you. I know. Shut the fuck out. So, I found and her, uh, her social security thing, and yeah, she'll probably be okay after a couple okay. 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 We, uh, we got a surprise about having to pick up part of a, another bill. That uh, we really don't have the money to cover. I'm like, oh, great. Wonderful. Merry Christmas. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Oh, right. Put your glasses back on. Yeah, give me a second. All right, all right. Oh my goodness, sassy cat is sassy. Look, Sam, I, I don't have the patience right now. And now someone else. They're just coming out with the old people. They're not giving me attention. No, they don't. She doesn't want anything to do with them lately. She wants her treats and then she wants to run. Alright, so, now, yeah, so I don't know what the fucking deal was with that. Hopefully, later it will be better. Someone thinks they may have found an option that will make the dragon riding be usable for me in the settings. I haven't had the chance to try it yet because I'm not up to the dragon riding point. I didn't even bother questing. Um, because I already knew it was going to be shit for me, so I need to take a look at that. Um, I was trying to, I found my crochet hooks last night, I forgot I had bought them kept thinking, oh yeah, I need to get a crochet hook, and I found two in our craft bin, so I was like, oh hey, I was trying to learn how to crochet last night. The yarn I'm trying to learn on is not ideal. It's that um, sugar and cream stuff, the cotton... Kind of stuff. I refer to it as like the, the dish rag stuff because that's what a lot of the uh, handmade dish scrubbies, what they feel like they're made out of. I might have 
have to change the color of that bottom there. Look you. Get out of there. Alright. No. Going back in here. We might have just enough to get the top color done here. I still need to try to add on the little finny guy if we have enough. I'd hope we can do it in this color. Probably gonna have to use that other color to do our little around the edge stuff. Cover all of this up. We'll see, though. We will see. here than I'm thinking we do. We'll see. See how this goes. Alright. See Twitch did their end of year recap for everybody that went out in the emails. I've seen some people starting to share them. Interesting. Mine wasn't all that exciting. Because I don't hang out in that many different streams. I usually don't have time. I try to when I have a minute. So it seems like as soon as I'm done here, I have to run and take care of something else. I swear, the stuff I'm finding. Nope, nope. Look, Buzz. Stuff I'm finding in here. I think they call it plant matter. I don't know what the hell it's supposed to be. I don't know if it's just pieces of grass or coarse fluff that didn't get fluffed properly. I don't know. Oh, sorry for the blue tape. Oh, Zorts! Hey, Zorts. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Sorry for the blue tape on my hand. Um, I didn't have any band-aids nearby when we got started. And I really wasn't in the mood to go hunt for one. So how is Zorts? I was just thinking about you the other day. She wants... Oh my goodness! She found her meower. She's being all sorts of sassy. She hasn't had that much time out of the bedroom the past couple of days because we had to clean 
the one kennel that we use for timeout now because we can't trust the other cat in the bedroom after he went on a marking fest even though he's fixed because he's an asshole you're okay um we've been better we've been better been a long week. Two weeks? Week and a half? Something like that, but it's just tough going. So if, if I vanish from the plane of existence for a while, it's because we couldn't pay the internet, most likely. That should be your first thought. But we'll see how that goes. guy tapped in here. Getting closer to being done this one. Not that close, but closer. And I definitely want to get into Zoo and try that tutorial. For the new guided tour. That's on my list of things to do. So do you have to do a lot of overtime with this new job? I guess it's not really all that new anymore, but... I know the other place you had to do a shit ton of overtime, like mandatory. So yeah, there's been a ton of sirens in the last like hour. I have no idea what's going on. I checked on the gossipy Facebook pages and nobody was saying anything, so I was like, hmm. I know there was an accident to our south at one of the tunnels, or the main tunnel, heading to Fort Smith. They had to close the tunnel and divert traffic because a semi hit a car and they were talking about the, the drainage, the, the drainage, uh, like the water drainage pipes or pit or whatever it was that they used for in the tunnel had diesel fuel in it that was on fire or something. I was like, oh, that's not good. Overtime has been pretty much non-existent since October. You snag, you did snag an extra day last week though. Okay, so it's very different from the other place then. Because the other place was just... It seemed like you would have been better off just like sleeping in the break room at the other place. For as much as you were there, it didn't even seem worth going home. So I still have to add like a little fin on the back of this. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it. I 
I might have to try to do it on the felt and then kind of attach it separately. You know, I started out thinking, oh yeah, this won't be that bad. I should have just did the flat one. So if we can 3D this one, it would have been faster to do it flat, hands down. One hundred percent. My terrible attempt at crocheting last night. I kind of get the single crochet. Kind of. But it was still pretty horrendous. I've got missed stitches, miss uh, extra stitches. I'm pretty sure I dropped stitches. It, it's a it's not terrible, but yeah, there's definitely bigger holes in sections where I think I skipped a stitch. I mean, it, it's not great, but you know, first attempt at really crocheting. I'm not trying to make anything specific either. I'm just like, I'm not like trying to follow a pattern or anything. I was just kind of dicking around. I start reading patterns and my brain just melts and I'm just like, uh, yeah, I don't know about this. Cause I lose track of my stitches. And kind of tired today. We were, well, I was, Russell had an anxiety attack last night, but I was up way later than I should have been because the weather had me concerned. Because they kept kind of dicking around saying, oh, you're in a severe risk. You're not in a severe risk. Maybe a severe risk. Like, they couldn't make up their minds. And, um, looking at the temperature difference that was gonna come in, I'm like, um, we might be. And then they're like, oh, strong storms. And I'm like, well, strong storms usually indicate potential. So, I was kind of sitting here, and I was like, oh, these storms kind of fizzled out in Oklahoma. Because even like a couple of the weather storm chasers were kind of scratching their heads about everything on radar looks like these storms should be producing tornadoes and stuff, but they weren't. And so while they were happy that everyone was safe, they were just like really confused. And then I was like, well, if they're not concerned, maybe we'll just go to bed. And I was gonna go to bed and then I did one last check of Facebook and it's like, oh, all of a sudden the, the one news station in Oklahoma is live at like four in the morning and suddenly there's tornado warnings popping everywhere and I was like, oh god. So the way the storms were moving a couple of them looked like they had potential to come into our part of arkansas and the one guy they were talking to one of their storm chasers was um out there and he's like i had to pull over for a minute because the wind was just so ridiculous and he's like look at this look at the wind screaming over the roof of my truck. He's like, this is crazy. This has got to be like 80 mile an hour winds. And I'm like, holy shit. And then they, they cut away from him and then they came back to him all frantic and he's like, this was a tornado that just went over my car or I was in the um, tornado wind field or something. He goes, because the winds just shifted on me complete opposite direction. And um, apparently like five minutes from him or something where he was at there was uh, tornado damage to houses and stuff a couple houses got pretty much 
wrecked. I was like, oh damn. So then I was up a bit later. They never put us in the tornado watch specifically. To our south did. But us specifically didn't get put in it. And I was like waiting for him to do something. We were under a wind advisory because that wind, man. That wind was scary last night. It was howling through the trees. It sounded like a tropical storm or a hurricane moving through. It was crazy. Just this eerie, just howling noise up in the tops of the trees that you could hear from inside. I was sitting here waiting for the power to go out. It never even flickered. Surprisingly enough, but that was pretty, pretty wild. And so it was in the 50s when that came through. It might still be in the 50s right now. Um, I don't... We don't, I don't even think we got a thunderstorm. If we did, I passed out and slept through it. Um, we definitely got the rain and the wind. But the storm started to fizzle as they were getting closer to our area, at least as far as the tornado side of things went. So I'm like, alright, I'm gonna try to go to sleep then. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, um... I think tonight it's supposed to drop down to the 30s. And then the rest of the week our lows are like in the 20s towards the end of the week. I'm like, damn. And then next week they're talking we could have snow showers. And I was like, what? Are you serious? They're not 100% sure yet because, you know... You start to get more than two days out on those weather models. Sometimes they get a little, a little rambunctious in their forecasting, but I guess we'll see if dinosaur behave yourself. I guess we'll see if the uh, truck is so loud all the time. Yeah, so I guess we'll see what happens weather-wise. So this is supposed to be um, an ornament for my dad. Kind of, kind of looks like his hydroplane boat that he used to race. For those that are unsure of what the heck we're making, it's not a mushroom or anything like that. Just, this is a odd shape that we need to come up with here. And Cal is meowing in the background. He's mad because he's in timeout. Because the other cat is out. He's barely been in there. He's been in there like maybe an hour. He has a litter box, he has food, he has water. He is good. He's just being in aggravating brat. He's fine. But putting him in the bedroom, swapping out who was in the other room for a couple of hours wasn't working any longer because he decided that he was going to destroy the place. And uh, that's not going to work. So was the only other alternative. So we're doing our final, well, our sort of final top color layer. Oh, here, so how's everybody doing? How's your week going so far? I know it's still kind of early in the week. We've got, um, what are we on? We're on Tuesday, right? So, 
We're on Tuesday. So hopefully our weeks have started out okay. Imagine people Ah, come back here. People are getting just trying to get through the week to get to the holidays coming up. So we'll probably be doing a stream this Saturday at some point. Don't know what time because there's no podcast this weekend. Podcast is officially on winter break. Which, you know, makes me happy. It's one less thing I have to worry about. One less thing to deal with. Especially why I'm frantically trying to get um, Christmassy things done. So I know we had a couple of options that I had talked about that we might do, but... Um, there's a chance that the husband and I might start our new Planet Zoo challenge Saturday as well. So I haven't really decided what we're going to do yet. We'll do something. I just don't know what yet. And we might have to skip Coral Island again this week. Just so you know. We might have to do another crafty stream because I am really behind on the dinosaur. I'm gonna still try to keep working on him off stream since you guys didn't really see him from the beginning anyway but we might have to do some extra work on him instead of doing a full on Coral Island stream. Although I do want to get back into Coral Island because I did that quality of life update. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff that came in. We'll have to sit and read through the um, patch notes from that. That was a, I mean, obviously it was a free update. Um, because the game's still in early access. I was surprised they did a quality of life update before a content update, though. But, um, you know. That was their choice, and it, it was a lot of stuff. Like, a ton of stuff I wasn't expecting to see anywhere near that much stuff. I was like, oh damn. We've been busy. So it might have been stuff that they were planning on doing anyway. Some of it came from feedback. So, like they fi fixed a bunch of typos and stuff in the quest text and apparently controller support should be in now. I have a controller, but my breakaway cable is missing, or Russell's was missing and Russell has mine. We're not sure which. His should fit my controller though, we think. Um, so I mean, Katamari was an option, um, checking out Epic Chef that was I ended up with by happenstance. Um, from our friend's game bundle. Um, we haven't looked at that yet. I was thinking of doing pinata, but at the same time, I don't think you can get pinata anymore, so... I don't know. Hi, who's- what? What are you doing? What's the matter? Oh, the cats are sassy tonight. My goodness. 
I couldn't figure out who kept touching the back of my chair, and then I realized it was Little. Standing on the windowsill. She's like, lady, pay attention to me. I guess the excitement of having her blanket back has worn off. She always wants attention at like the times where I can't really give it. But at least she doesn't bodily jump into the middle of what I'm doing. Uh, my mind did that to me a couple of times. I was like, oh, no, okay. Right. Which can be problematic depending on what I'm working on. Fortunately, the hot glue gun wasn't out that particular day. So we looked out there. But, uh... No, everybody's just sassy pants today. So, anybody have any holiday plans? Any get-togethers? Any holiday shopping still left to do? Any holiday creating still left to do? Like, like we're broke, so people are getting handmade gifts. And that's really only because I had the stuff on hand already. Probably just dinner with your dad and sister. Alright, nice. So, um, we're not doing anything with the mother-in-law. Um, she's supposed to stop by at some point. We don't know when. Um... Probably before the end of next week, if it's supposed to snow again. Although they're in Missouri, so I don't know what their plan is. Because her and her sister are still kind of gallivanting around with uh, the RV. So it's going to be really just us for Christmas, um, and by us I mean um, me, the husband, and my parents. So um, we're probably going to do um, pizza and meatball sandwiches Christmas Eve and then we'll do shit when is Christmas Eve you guys it's a Saturday okay yeah we could still get a stream in earlier in the day alright um cause making pizza dough doesn't take that long so, um, we're gonna do like kind of organized pizza and meatballs and stuff, yeah. um, Christmas Eve, then we'll do gifts later okay, you'd like me to get that okay. evening. You alright? Yeah, just call me and let me know I can get his recycling bucket if I want to, you know, whatever. I did tell him to call and tell us when his bucket needed to get empty. I'm gonna get in a minute. It's been a rough day. Um, so yeah, we'll do gifts Christmas Eve, and then um, Christmas Day I'll be cooking. 
And we tend to lean towards turkey because that's what everybody eats. Um, so it won't be like a huge thing. But um, we also managed to get a couple extra turkeys because Walmart was trying to offload them, I guess. We were there the other night and they had... They didn't have a whole lot left, but they had some in the one freezer display for like 25 cents a pound and we're like oh shit and uh, we had room in the freezer so we actually did get a couple because we're probably gonna need to eat them one one will save for for um probably Easter and then the rest can be for whenever because we can get a few days out of that so we're like we can't not get that It would be silly of us to not get it. Alright, so. Just have this little bit on the end top to cover. So yeah, our Christmas isn't going to be all that exciting. There won't be a stream Christmas day though, you guys. I'm going to be busy cooking. People are going to be busy playing with their new toys anyway. Visiting. Doing family stuff. We'll try to do one Christmas Eve though. That shouldn't be a problem. We don't really do anything that grand on Christmas Eve. It'll probably be um, earlier in the evening that we, or late afternoon that we do something. So that shouldn't be too much of a thing because we don't do gifts until later in the evening anyway, probably like 8 or 9 o'clock. You're okay. It's okay. Husband's having a rough day. It didn't help about the Merry Christmas. Here, you have to pay this bill. Unexpectedly. Yet again. contribute to it a little bit for the next month or two. Alright, we're probably going to have to put in probably one more layer on this back section because We still have some color bleeding through there from the core, like on the very back section here. I still have to make this spin, and I'm not quite certain how I'm going to approach that. We'll see what we can do here. Does anybody have plans for New Year's Eve? I know it's still early. Does anybody have any New Year's traditions? What they're going to do. Um, 
We don't do shit. <laughs> we don't go nowhere. Um, we don't really drink or party or anything we couldn't afford to anyway. But, um, don't know if the husband will be up at midnight. I probably will be just for happenstance. And then I'll get to sit here listening to everybody shoot off fireworks that they're not supposed to be shooting off. The town has city ordinances about when you can shoot off fireworks, but it doesn't seem like they do anything for people that violate it. It's like, okay, well then why do we have the ordinance then? And that one spot is just being stubborn. About getting covered. Alright, so before I get too crazy trying to cover that. So I'm going to take a section about yay big, and I'm going to try folding it over on itself. What happened to- there it is. Alright, so I'm going to grab our felt base here. My scrap felt. And uh... Just gonna see about just kind of trying to felt this over on itself here. Cause I need to try to make this thin. don't know how well this is going to work. I mean, I guess I could just felt over the felt and just attach it, but then you're going to see the inside of the felt, like the felt edge on it. And I don't know if I have any felt that I can get to that's this color. I don't know what colors I have left in it. I have a multi-pack of felts, and then I have um, some like fuchsia, which definitely isn't going to work here. All right, I am just doing this on top of this piece of felt just to make it easier to get up off of the mat. That's the only reason. I, mean, I could probably just hold it and be just fine. But yeah, like we're not doing anything special for like New Year's dinner or nothing. My mom used to try to get prime rib for New Year's Day dinner. I can't be bothered cooking another big meal right after Christmas. No thanks. She wants to cook it for her and my dad. That's one thing. The meat's so expensive right now, I really just, just can't with that. And Walmart's playing fuck around and find out with what people are going to pay for groceries, which is really freaking aggravating. Because stuff that was like, oh my god, that got amazingly huge in price is now suddenly back down to, hey, uh, this didn't sell and it's going to go bad, so we're going to just mark it down. So 
that's like really all right so i mean as you keep stabbing this and flipping it over it's going to keep getting a little bit smaller because you're pulling the fibers in on themselves. Like, I don't know if Walmart was selling the Christmas trees or not, but going from 80 bucks, like, the week or day after Thanksgiving down to $16, like, a week ago... Really? We're gonna play these games. Alright. Let's see here. I'm gonna grab another bit of fluff of fluff. Alright, so I'm gonna try to get this on the side of this. And I know this is going to look kind of silly. I more than know it. I'm just kind of making attachment points. for this thing, so... Let's see, we snip there. And then we grab this piece. And then I kind of want to attach this to this side here. I know it doesn't make much sense at the moment. Yeah. Let go. Okay. So I've got this crazy looking fuzzy thing. Now. I'm gonna kinda make a rounded sharky fin. Try to at least my squeaky ass scissors. All right, we might have to trim him up a bit more as we go on here. Okay, so now. Sassy cat still being sassy, it would seem. Yeah, I'm not even sure if I put that in the right spot or a little. We're a little off center, I think, but shouldn't be too bad. So now I'm going to try to use this to kind of wrap around the back here. 
try to help cover that spot that was being a little bit extra fussy about it. I guess we can get rid of that mat now. Don't really need it anymore. Pull this guy in this way. I'm just kind of coming down through the side edges just to try to ensure this guy is attached. best as he can be. Now I might trim that down a little bit further still. Just to uh, shorten him up a little bit. Though I just realized getting the final bottom coat on here is going to be a little bit tricky now. But we'll see what we can do. This is dinosaur with only a part of his tail done is sitting here staring at me. No judgment from you, Mr. Dino. I don't want to hear it. His mouth is just hanging open. Mr. Dino. I got more of his tail done, but I'm up to picking up every off my desk or up to here. I've started to hit the skeleton again so we have to be careful with uh, that guy. So I've definitely hit the section where we're gonna get a bit more time consuming again. I did get Russell's Hermit Crab finished. That's on the tree. And the other gifts we've kind of seen already. So there's the sis the, the mother-in-law's sister. That one's for her. We've got the butterfly. And then we've got my mom's rooster. I mean, the rooster is about about the same length as the boat. Okay, so I'm just making sure that all of our little anchory guys are in place. There is so much glitter in this mat. Oh, you are a little off center. Shit. Oh well, there ain't nothing for it now. It's just gonna be that way. Alright, so you. Don't want to cut, do you? Alright, sometimes you just gotta get in there and reshape it a little bit. 
as best as you can. Before we get too carried away hair cutting, we do have one more bit of fluff to add. So, I mean, it's not bad. Actually, two more bits of fluff. We need to put our seat in place. give the indication of where seating would be located. I decided not to try to put the engine -y stuff in. This is going to be really... Well, I don't know. Should I? Should I put the engine exhaust pipes in? of detail that needs to be there on this small guy. I'm still on the fence about it. I don't know. I keep saying I'm not going to and then I'm like, yeah, but maybe I should. So mad that's off center now. Oh well. I'm not mad enough to move it. But rip it out and redo it. Alright, we get this. I want to make sure this is good and attached. And that crunch is coming from this itself, not from uh, the mat. That's the mat. That's this. They sound very simul similar. 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 So we've got that much. That much fiber in this guy. I don't know. Should we? I mean, it wouldn't probably take that much to do it. Let's see here. We would need a bit of black fluff. over here. Head in to this sort of shape. color close at hand that we can use. Let's see though, I won't 
know for sure until I look. I mean, I've got a color I can use somewhere. Either on the fluff wall or next to me. Of that I'm pretty certain. guys good and not fuzzy so I've switched over to the yarn here the black is gonna be yarn so we've got that one black section And then we've got another black section on this side. Question is, can I get them sort of the same lengths? That is really big question. Don't know. We will see. A lot of traffic today, my goodness. So many noisy vehicles. getting there. So did everybody enjoy their Twitch recap emails? When I first started reading it, I guess I was still kind of half asleep. And um, I didn't quite understand it and I'm like, there's no way I watched that many hours of Twitch. There's just no way. It's not possible. And then I reread it again and I'm like, oh, that's Twitch saying. That's a Twitch itself internal stat, not a, not a me personally stat. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. Let's see here if I can find, oh, actually, this will do. So we'll go back to the roving. This is like a misty, why, why would you do this? We don't need to tie this into a knot to make it even more difficult. Seriously. Okay. Now, this. This is going to be the really tricky part. Now, roving. You can. 
kind of get to cooperate a little bit more with a little bit of water. Like, don't soak it. Just, like, maybe dampen the tips of your fingers. And then it won't be quite as unruly, potentially. But this might be a little hard to get this detail across here. Like, I know what it is because I've seen all kinds of pictures of these boats. Different classes and stuff. His was an E class. Hydroplane. So, not like super fancy like the professional Miss Budweiser kind of deal and stuff. Um, like his was a single driver. There was a Miss Budweiser though in the amateur circuit too. I do remember seeing that boat. to a couple of boat races, but I just didn't enjoy going. I was much younger, I was bored as shit, and everything was too loud. It was hot, there were bugs. And there was so much downtime in between the actual races. We were on the shore. I couldn't see that well from where we were. I tried to take or get him to uh, go to. I offered to um, have him come to Key West with us and offered to try to find a hotel room the week that they were doing the offshore boat racing. Now, not hydroplane, but I figured he might enjoy it, but he didn't want to schlep all the way down there for that. So I was like, oh, alright, well, fine then. Don't say I didn't offer. We actually might not have been able to get a hotel room anyhow, because they were pretty booked. I was surprised we got a hotel room for the week that we did. And you know, in town events, they're gonna charge through the nose. As places often do. <laughs> Alright, so this is supposed to be kind of like the exhaust pipes coming out the side of the engine block.
kind of hard to get that conveyed here. Much easier to get the point across in paint than it is with this. Snippy snip. And we'll get those tails tucked into there. All right, and then we'll have to do so. We'll see, there's that. And we'll do the same on this side. sure if the dampness trick works as well on the acrylic yarn or not. I mean, it kind of works on the roving a bit because, you know, people can do the, like some of the needle felted stuff. You, you felt it and then you wash it and then it shrinks and all that if you do the wet felting and things I do the dry felting because usually we're doing the Bob Rossi things or just the, the painting with it we're not like making things to wear and stuff. Which you can do. That is a thing. I had a felted hat one time. Leather and wear and tear finally got it. It was pretty cute. It was a little expensive though, but I can understand the price charged for it. Time consuming. To uh, get done here. Usually when you try to do intersection on this stuff, most of it just kind of melts on in. So I kind of need to come back in and do second pull down just to thicken him up a little bit.
And this is probably a little too light gray, but it was right here, so I was like, I don't want to. I'm searching for 20 minutes for such a small amount of fluff that we're going to use. Alright, so we'll get our last little side pipey guy. Put it into here. Speaking of dinner, what's everybody doing for dinner? What's on top? We did pizza last night. Tonight we're gonna do burgers because we realized we still had some in the freezer because I am like out of everything my food stockpile has been depleted and we can't really go food shopping till Thursday. Alright, now I'm gonna bring this guy kind of across all three here before I cut him this time. I think we have some french fries that we can have with the burgers tonight. If not, I still have some rice squirreled away. Hello! What a uh, yarnoholic, I think, is how we're pronouncing that. How are you? I hope you are well. Alright, so let's see here. We've got quite a bit of loose fuzzes here on the edge. Oh, our bottom's a... Our bottom needs help. We have to do our final cover on our top edge there here still too, so... Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Just call you Yarn or Yarnaholic if that's easier. Okay. Yarnaholic it is. I hope you are doing okay. So this was the model that my dad made of it years ago. That was my high chair. Talking years ago. Is there a date on here? No. This says that it's Kodak film. At one point, I think the pictures had um, dates printed, or the year printed on the back when they were um, printed. Don't see that though. So you're doing good, just eating some noodles before we work on either a crochet garland or some Christmas socks. So this is a Christmas tree ornament for my dad. Um, we have a tradition that started where my mom and dad get some sort of Christmas tree ornament or some sort of handmade gift 
um, either depicting the boat that my dad used to race or um, roosters or a chicken or something that my mom is obsessed with. So my mom is getting a rooster. We finished him a couple of weeks ago. So rooster guy. I had to put two um, hanging points on him because he was a little top heavy. And this is the boat or it's an attempted mock-up of the boat that my dad used to race. He was a amateur hydroplane uh, race boat driver. Kind of the, the weekend league that would go around and uh, compete and stuff. So last year we did um, little boat ornaments out of clay. So this year we're trying to do some ornaments, or at least a ornament, out of fluff. So the model doesn't really depict what the boat actually looked like. It was the closest thing he could get. It was a model kit that he bought. But that was his class and boat number that was on there. And the name of the boat was back here. I've tried to see if any vintage photos turned up from anywhere. Because you never know people taking photos at these things. God, it's cr oh. It hurts to talk about vintage in the 80s, like, seriously. Um, but, uh, so he's had to stop racing either the year I was born or the year after. So, I was born in 81, so it was somewhere around in there. But, like, I look up these photos trying to do Google searches and can't seem to find a picture just floating around randomly that happened to turn up of his. I have one picture where he was actually driving it that somebody else took. It's somewhere in this house, but I can't find it. I can't remember if I shoved it back in the bin that we have all of our remaining paper photos in. you don't really see anymore. Everybody's got uh, their digital photos. This is an old photo. It's on photo paper. Yes, I'm that old. I'm just trying to do another just kind of quick edging here just to try to cover up all of our wraparound from the bottom. He can't see that well. I don't think he's really gonna care about that many imperfections in it to point them out, so. It's just sort of a me trying to clean it up just a little bit. Decided to do this for him this year because every time we've tried to buy him something he's like excited about it and then never does anything with it like we even bought him a little tiny mini drone that's like the size of your hand that he could use in the house I think he used it three times I figured he'd be like chasing the cats with it and tormenting them, but he used it like three times and then didn't use it anymore. And we're like, Ugh, okay. We were originally going to get sweatshirts with vinyl art that the husband did of 
uh, like vinyl iron-ons. We found a place that would uh, custom print for not too much money. Um, husband did some art and we were all set to order it and then something happened and we couldn't order it. So still a possibility for us to attempt doing that at a later date. Or it might turn into next year's Christmas presents. We'll see. But um, his boat didn't have the big spoiler on the back. He kind of had a shark fin. So that's what this little thing is. It's resting against my finger back here. I really wanted a thicker pass on this wraparound here that I'm doing now, but I'm almost out of this color. I have the other color there, but that might annoy me a little too much because they are just off enough that I can tell. He wouldn't be able to tell, but I can tell. He's uh, colorblind, so I don't know if he can see this color or not. That might be why the model picture color is so dark, because the boat was not that color, unless that was just the only color paint he could find. The boat was kind of like a metallic-y powder blue, kind of. Like, maybe a shade darker than, like, a powder blue tux, so. I, I don't know why he's got it, like, navy in that picture. I actually thought that's the color the boat was until I saw the other picture of it. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, this is the same boat? And he goes, yeah. Like, they're different colors. But he had to sell the boat. And I don't know what happened to it after he sold it. I don't know if whoever bought it kept racing it or if um, it was just used for parts. I have no idea what happened to it. He got a, a couple of like trophy plaques from uh, racing it a couple times. He has this lamp that the bottom... <laughs> It is so 70s. Um, that has a, uh, it's like this, the, the base of the lamp, I guess you'd call it the base. The, the thing that the lamp mechanism for the light bulb gets attached to. Yeah, I guess the lamp base. It's in the shape of a duck. And not a small duck either. It's like, let's see, this guy's about 11 inches long. Um... I'd say uh, it's probably gonna go off screen. I'd say it might be like a foot wide and it looks like like a duck decoy like a mallard um, and it goes up in you know like an ovally lamp shape shade on it that's about as wide as the duck base itself and there's a damn little plaque on it that he he won this lamp at one of their awards things or whatever and I'm like that's kind of weird but okay I don't remember what the um, what the plaque says he still has that lamp it's in the other room but I'm, I remember to ask I'm like what's with the duck and he goes oh it was a trophy and I'm like the the lamp duck was a trophy he goes yeah I'm like okay lamp still works I mean <laughs> Tell you, shit that was made back in the day actually lasted. Nowadays, half the stuff you buy, you sneeze in its direction and it disintegrates. So you gotta give it credit for that at least. It's kind of creepy though, because it just kind of like stairs and I'm just like mm, okay sure 
I don't know if I could sleep in the same room with it. It would unnerve me. But then again, I also might turn around and like attach Google Eyes to it. Just to make it not quite so unnerving. But that's me. I'm pretty sure it has like fake fake animal eyes on it anyhow. So it probably wouldn't attach well. Alright. Get this wrapped around here. And then, you know, we've got the other stuff. So that that was just on screen, the purple monstrosity, that's the husband's remaining gift. I have to get working on that. Because I'm running out of time. He's o he said he's okay if it's late, but I'd really rather it not be. If we can help it. So we might have to do a couple extra crafty streams this week as time allows. So we will see. So I won't be back again tonight once we finish this one. Also, not only does today's things disintegrate with a sneeze, they make it to where it's more difficult to repair if you want. Yeah, you know? It's like, can't I just, you know, repair this thing? We bought a cheap ass kitchen timer. And I kid you not, like, we've dropped it a few times and it got a little weird, but it was still kind of working. But I think the battery finally went in it. And, um, in order to replace the battery, it's it's like a little tiny watch battery. It's probably going to be cheaper just to buy a new one than it is to buy the battery and try to get it in there. And I'm just like, really? I'm like, this is dumb. And I never realized how much I used that damn timer until it broke and I'm like, I need a timer. Because apparently we found out the hard way. How am I going to do this? Um, that'll work. Um, I found out the hard way that the iPad that we had, the ancient iPad <laughs> that we had set up in the uh, kitchen Apparently, if it goes into screensaver or the screen turns off for power saving mode or whatever, um, if you have a timer running on a, one of the browsers, browser windows, and the screen shuts off, timer doesn't go off. I have been standing there watching the one pot of rice that I was making and I was checking on it and I'm like I would put seven minutes on the timer and I'm like I was standing there talking to the husband and I'm standing there and I'm standing there and I'm standing there and I'm like you know it feels like it's been seven minutes what is going on and I went to go check on the timer I'm like oh the screen turned off and I turned it back on and like the second I turned the screen back on it said like minus I had like four minutes to go and then it was at zero like the second I turned it on I was like uh how long has this been done and the husband's phone is starting to get cranky so doing a timer on his phone we've had the timer not always go off Zuzu yeah. He's growling at you. Do I need to get him? Oh my God. All right. 
All these animals being sassy tonight. Now the dogs are kicking in. Such sassiness. Huh? Yeah, that's why I was surprised that he was gurring at you. That was very odd. So I'd already done this once on the bottom. And didn't think about the the roving that we had put in the middle getting slammed back through. <laughs> so I kind of need to just do another run here. Sorry, I was suddenly concerned that everything was coming through the other side. This is just pieces of foam. I'm going to be making a new felting mat. Um, I'm going to have the husband help me. He has this foam that he bought for for a puppet um, that he didn't end up using. And it's been sitting there like we've had it for a while. That's why it's discolored. Picking up different environmental colorations in the air and everything. And um, I was like, are you going to use that? Because if you're not <laughs> now, now the cat's being meowy again. Every time he walks away from his desk and starts to come back, she's, she's like, meow, you walked away. And, um, she's... <laughs> my, my, it's dog crunchy. <laughs> She was eating the dry dog food, even though she had her own food. I don't know what her deal is today. She's just... <laughs> Apparently she's interested in the dog biscuits. What? Uh -huh. She can't even chew them. She's missing teeth. That's what I got, lady. <laughs> no attitude, it's what I got. <sighs> oh, that one. That cat. So yeah, um, he's not really, he like kind of was still planning to use it, but he has no idea when he's going to get around to it. And I'm like, well, if you're not really going to use it, I could use that. I kind of need a new felting mat. And I didn't realize that I was kind of going to need a new one sooner than later when my mom was bugging me about what I wanted for Christmas. If I don't give her a Christmas list, she will buy everything that I would never use. It's we've we've argued with her repeatedly about it. It's just easier to just give her a list and be like, "Here, you figure it out," instead of just leaving her to her own devices. Because then she ends up buying me all kinds of clothes that I can't wear. Because she buys stuff that she likes and not necessarily fabric texture that I can handle or you know something that I would even be caught dead in. Like I don't mind the look of the three quarter sleeves on people. I can't do them because I'm constantly tugging them down my arm thinking that you know my sleeve's stuck. It either needs to be pushed up or it needs to be pulled down and <laughs> when it's in the middle it drives me insane. So it's like, no, no. I, so I know just about everything I'm getting because she's like, come on, I'm going to go buy your clothes. You have to come with because you have to try the shit on. And I'm like, y you don't need to buy me clothes. And she's like, I'm buying you clothes. So either come and pick it out or you're going to be mad at what I pick out. I'm like, all right, fine. But, um, yeah, so the dogs have been attitude -y. Cats are attitude -y. So we have two dogs, and we've got five cats right now. We have a, we sort of have a sixth cat, but not really. Um, we call him our freeloading stepchild, 
Well, actually, if you want to go to that that degree, we kind of have. Well, he's not a cat though, so technically six cats. It was seven, but the other cat vanished. He, he got kicked out of the territory that I guess our house is considered to be in for the cats outside. So we've got five indoor cats. We've got cat number six that showed up out of nowhere one rainy night meowing at us frantically and fighting with the other cat that had been visiting us that we know has a home. And um, he kind of moved in and took over. We can't bring him in. We, we don't have the capability to shelter him inside. It's, it's not going to happen. He's not fixed. We don't have the money to get him fixed. He's weird about being picked up and I don't know how he's going to handle it if we try to trap him. He won't even go into like a cat house that we made when it was bitterly cold and snowing the one night. So um, I don't think he's dumb enough to walk into a live trap. Um, So we can't really capture him. And then sometimes even when we're petting him, he gets a little rambunctious and makes us nervous sometimes. So I don't really want to fuck with him too much. But he's definitely not fixed. And um, we, we can't bring him in here because we've seen him fight with a couple of other cats outside fights that we've had to go out there and break up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that in the house. We already have one cat that we have to put in timeout when the other one is running loose in the house because they don't get along. I, I can't handle that with another cat. Sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't know where you live. I'll feed you. So occasionally, like we try to ration the food that we give him because we're not entirely convinced he doesn't have a home somewhere because sometimes he'll go a day or two where we don't see him. So um, we've definitely had to start rationing since the possum showed up. The cat would fight with say, let it stay outside, not mice. Yeah, we've um, had some mice troubles over the past year or so, so he can stay out there. He keeps like trying to come in. So we think he was an indoor cat maybe at one point, or maybe indoor outdoor. Maybe he was a barn cat that left his barn duties. His ears not notched, so he wasn't part of a catch and release program. Just don't know where he came from, he just showed up one night. And then, um, one night we were out for a walk and we hadn't seen him like all day and we walk a few blocks in different directions from where our house is. Depends on what strikes our fancy that particular night and I kept thinking I was hearing something behind us but every time I looked I didn't see anything. And finally, I heard it again and turned around and there he is following us. And I was like, where did you come from? This is like out of your normal territory, sir. You've never followed us this far before. You usually stop at a specific intersection and don't tend to go past it. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's just like, meow. Fuzz from doing the bottom of the boat, the needle. That needle's bent from working on the husband's gift, so it doesn't go straight down. So I can't really 
anticipate where the fuzz is going to come from. I thought we were good. I didn't want to fully felt back in, so I'm just going to try to trim him up. as best as I can here so um yeah I turned around and like there he is and then he just kept following us and I'm like we're like go home we'll be we'll, we'll go back home in a minute just go home and uh we crossed the street and he crossed with us he's got a healthy respect of cars at least so that's a good thing he gets far away from them and uh I turned around and he was walking up somebody's walkway to their front door and I'm like did you find somebody to take you in is that why we haven't been seeing you for a couple of days at a time because the house that he was walking up to their porch on um, people had moved out of there a couple of months ago and somebody knows there now but he showed up before those people moved out so I don't know where he came from and he originally wasn't walking that far with us like he was hard stopping at the one corner nowhere near there so I don't know what his deal is but we try not to leave too much food out for him and we try to like only give him like a third of a cup of food whenever we see him and we don't want to leave a whole lot out there unattended because we have a possum that started showing up that's just been eating the cat food. And I'm not going to chase the possum away because, you know, let them eat all the bugs and stuff and the grass and everything. I'm cool with that. But I can't really afford to be feeding the possum cat food, so... Some months it's a struggle to feed the, our own guys and my mom keeps just filling the bowl outside and I'm like no 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 you can feed the outside cat you just can't feed him this much and just leave it cause Fred the freeloading possum keeps turning up and eating it all and then outdoor child shows up and starts meowing and demanding food because there's nothing left in the bowl, so... Like, let's not. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay with him out there hunting mice. The other cat that was visiting us for a while that we know had a home was out there hunting mice in our front flower box for a while, so I'm, I'm okay with them doing that. That's fine. That's cool. But he can't come in. We had a few guinea pigs for a while, but we don't have them anymore. And right now we have hermit crabs. But they really, once you initially get them set up, they're not all that costly to maintain because they can eat just about anything because Russell has all kinds Russell's the husband um, he has all kinds of uh, Ziploc bags in the freezer of scraps from from dinner frozen fruit all the things because they're scavengers he finally got them some bloodworms. We had four, we're down to three, which isn't bad. The one had a, a molt that they didn't survive. But this set of crabs is surviving a lot better than the last set that we had. And he bought a huge box of the salt that he needs, so that'll probably last for at least a few more months. 
before we have to even think about getting that uh, replaced. So, all right. So we had a little bit more of the inside color poking through, but I think that's pretty good on that. So, I need our high screws. Oh, and I need, if I can reach it, my toolkit. I'm not going to put wiggle eyes on the boat, even though it would probably amuse me greatly. My dad would probably be like, what the fuck is this? So, let's see, where do we think? Probably just in the center. Oh, you know what? We could, like, do it right here. And it could double. as the uh, steering wheel. Come here, little tiny plastic protector that I keep losing. Keep me from jabbing myself with the awl. Put you there. So let me take these guys off for a minute. Now you can probably just, I've done this with tacky glue. Right now I'm using Elmer's Pro Bond Advanced. You could probably do hot glue, but hot glue might get a little messy. This is going to take a little bit to set up, a couple hours to fully dry, but it's an alternative. Okay. So... All of my eye screws came out of the package. Great. This is why I put it in a Ziploc bag. So I had a feeling that was going to happen. Alright. So this is just a kitchen skewer that I have. This glue looks gray when it comes out of the tube. But it does dry a shiny clear. Now, you might not necessarily have to glue it. Um, I do just to make sure it doesn't come out because, you know, the pets and all. Alright, so that's gonna set up in there. So, yeah, it's not, not bad. I know it looks like a weird sneaker or something, but not too terrible. So there's my dad's. Yay. That gift is completed. It'll be fully complete once the screw things dry and I can um, put the, the hanger string or whatever I'm going to use. I'll probably just use embroidery thread because that's what I've got in front of me. Alrighty. So... Let's see, what time is it? 6.34. Alright. Are we eating together? I assume so. Okay, are you hungry? Uh, I can wait. <clears throat> Alright. Okay, so we don't need this color anymore, so we'll stick that back in there. Don't need that color. So that's gonna like soak in. It's a porous, um, it's a porous surface glue. So it does pretty decent. It's what we use to attach the other um, screw eyes and uh, I keep wanting to call them eye hooks, but there's technically not a hook on there. So, um, and it's also the glue that we used to just glue down all of the knots on the back so you, you can see that it's going to dry clear and it's a little 
shiny. I could have put a felt backer on that, but um, if I was giving it outside of family, I probably would have cleaned up that back a bit more. But, you know, it is what it is. We're really strapped for time on Christmas gifts this year, so. Ah! Look, chicken. Get up there. Alright, so I'm gonna sit you to the side over here. Alright, so we have a few more minutes. We can go. Walmart's open till. Look, chicken. Yeah, that chicken. Chicken's getting unruly over there. They're roving over there. I need to get that in a new Ziploc bag. I lost the bag that it was originally in. Okay. Let me kind of get myself reorganized here for a second. Don't think I need you right now. Okay. Fuzz. Where did the fuzz go? The teal fuzz. That's not the teal fuzz. Here's the teal fuzz. I've got to put some of these colors back up on my yarn wall. So, um, this guy. Hang on. We need to... My mouse went to sleep. We need to... do that. Alright. So, this guy's about 11-ish, 10-ish, 10 and a half, 11 inches long. He can stand up when he wants to cooperate. There is an armature wire skeleton in there. Which is how I bent this needle to begin with. So he's a he's a big guy. Um, this is the husband's second gift, so we can probably have a few minutes to get a little bit done on him. He's a little awkward to work on though, so let's see what we can do. The moment I'm working on his tail, and this wacky color is not his, what his final color is going to be. This was just the roving that I had a lot of that um, someone had given me, so I just kind of used that as his core. Um, so bit of the styrofoam poking through there from uh, his face. So yeah, we've got now the most of the tail is solid roving, most of it. Um, the skeleton starts about uh, about here on the tail. The rest of it is all um, solid roving that's picking up every bit of fuzz imaginable. But yeah, that's how that needle ended up bent, because I kept trying to attach, I'll tell you, attaching the roving to this metal skeleton was a nightmare. I was seriously cursing myself out. I'm like, why? Why did you do this? Oh, you thought it would make it easier, huh? So. I was like, well, you know, thought it would stand up better and keep it from being completely deformed. So I have to tread, there's the skeleton, I have to tread very carefully because I can no longer see where the frame is in there. I can certainly feel it when the needle hits it. To, oh, have to tread very carefully so we don't snap this guy entirely. I don't know if the crunchy noise from uh, felting is coming through the mic, but every time there's that weird donk, 
that that's me hitting the uh, the wire frame in there because that frame has kind of shifted around a little bit so it's not fully encased in roving some of the uh, the joints I had um, I had wrapped in tape. Just to make them a little bit gentler <laughs> to work around. Or at least that was the thinking behind it. It didn't do anything. So his one arm's a little bit longer than the other. I do realize that. For some reason, when I first started, they looked like they were the same length. Kind of. But for some reason, Symmetry and I just don't... We don't get along, so whenever I'm doing anything <laughs> that uh, requires, you know, to look at least like it's part of the same creature or entity on the opposite side of it, it's probably not going to happen. It's probably going to look alien and deformed. Oh man, that's like really close to the surface on the back side. So I'm going to have to kind of go in at an angle here just to kind of get him attached like skim the surface I know you're supposed to go straight down but that's not an option here because our our tailbone so to speak is right right there without me hardly tapping in all right let's see let's flip you around I kind of compressed his legs a little bit there I'm sure I'm gonna have to please be careful if you're doing something that's thinner than the length of your needle Okay, make sure you've got your finger protectors and keep the non-protected fingers out of the way as much as possible. It is very possible to stab oneself with these needles. And it is going to hurt. It is possible to go completely through your finger. I have not experienced that joy firsthand, but I've heard other people say stuff, so... And these needles have little tiny notches or barbs cut into them, so it's not going to be a pleasant experience. And you might have to go to the emergency room if it goes in far enough to get it pulled out without doing more damage. So, let's... Be careful. Sorry, it sounded like I heard a phone ringing. But not like... Like, it sounded like a... Not like, um... A, a tone, but it sounded like someone called somewhere in this house, and it sounded like the... When you're waiting for somebody to pick up in the other end, like the little tonal noise. Little doo... Doo... I can't describe that noise. It sounded like somebody was waiting for a call to get picked up on speakerphone, and I'm just like, what? I don't know where that noise was coming from. It might have been one of our computers humming. Husband had to reseat his graphics card last night. His graphics card tends to come loose a lot. I'm not entirely sure why.
I don't think any of the cats were climbing on his PC. We actually had to make, um, well, the power button on his PC is in a different place now, but when he had his old PC and we had to do it for my PC, we had to take like water bottle caps or some kind of plastic and uh, yeah, it, it, it hurts. I've accidentally barely stabbed myself with this thing. Just like the tip has barely touched one of my fingers when I was working on it and uh, on something. I was like, oh, that hurt. It like bled for like a second. It was like a, a pinprick and then it was done. But it still fucking hurts. But um, we had to take water bottle lids or something and make covers to put over our power buttons on our PC towers. Because Cow, being Cow, the cat, just can't help himself. And he has to climb all over everything. And he would climb up on our towers and in fact I think he I can't remember if he did it to me or the husband but I know we did it to one of us where we were in the middle of doing something in World of Warcraft and he stepped on one of our power buttons and turned the PC off I can't remember if we were in the middle of a raid or a dungeon we were trying to do something and he, he shut the computer down because we didn't realize he was standing on the power button so I'm like really it's like my goodness sir So yeah, I'm going to make a 11 by 14 pad out of four of these. Um, I tried to do a test of gluing the edges together. It didn't really work right. This was a little too porous. And for the amount of flexing that was going on, it, it didn't really work. So I'm going to take some embroidery thread and just kind of anchor the corners together. Just keep it from sliding all over. But four of these worked pretty good on this needle. I don't know how the wear and tear is going to go. We'll see but it's it'll be a temporary alternative because this thing is bulging upward from all of our Bob Ross stuff from putting it down and ripping it up and putting it down and ripping it up so look you alright uh, the good thing about this is, is that it's working, so I don't completely distort the shape as a temporary um, temporary, I guess, holding this up in the air and still being able to uh, tap it. Temporary resting place. Now I have actually gone through the protectors a couple of times with these things. I think it just happened to be pure happenstance with the angle. Cause there's other times where I've glanced off of them. I mean, they're only leather. I have a habit of getting right in between the stitching on this cause I've got it. I don't always have it where the stitching is pointed away. But uh, yeah, so just just be careful, even with them on. You know, just things can happen. But um, my attempt at learning how to crochet last night didn't go too badly. I didn't, I will admit, I didn't watch the tutorial all the way through. But I kind of understood what the lady was saying. I, I only watched like the single crochet thing. I probably she she did a the same tutorial where she was she showed a single crochet. There was another one. Was it single and a half? I think, and then there was a double. I'm like, whoa, whoa! We don't need to get all that fancy. I'm just trying to to figure out the basic, 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 basic. I'm not trying to follow a pattern. 
I'm not gonna be this crochet guru because crochet is not my my wheelhouse at all um, I mean kudos to those that can just sit down and work on stuff and not even really think about what they're doing um, my hand starts to cramp really bad doing it because I think I have a death grip on the crochet needle but um, I can do like the basic knit stitch and the basic purl stitch knitting but like I don't really know how to follow a pattern or anything and um, so she was kind of showing that so I don't know if I'm doing it a hundred percent right because I might have might have skipped a step there but uh, like I don't need to know how to do the double crochet right now I, I just I need to work on just the single crochet I'm trying to keep track of my stitches because when I was practicing last night I realized that I was not going back through all of the stitches I did on my first pass because when I started counting one row as I was going I'm like wait this was supposed to be 16 not 10 what the hell happened and then I realized oh I think I missed going through some things here so <laughs> I uh, ripped all that out and tried to start over and I think I still missed stuff but it's just gonna be for a silly lap blanket for me for when I'm at the computer and it's too warm for pants but too cold for shorts and I don't have a small tiny blanket that I can throw over my legs when I'm sitting here so it's gonna be like a remnant half-ass patchwork thing anyway because I'm digging through our craft treasure trove and seeing what we have over there I mean I've got all of this yarn for the roving but I didn't want to use it for that so uh, you can knit and crochet but you need to follow patterns yeah I've never really learned how to follow a pattern and stuff and I've tried to read a couple and I'm like yeah I, I have no idea um, like I can understand like I can get that why oh, what is it why O is like yarn over and stuff but I just my dyslexic brain is like yeah I I I give up like once it starts putting in all of the extra abbreviations and symbols and things uh, m my brain gets nervous and it's just like um yeah no I'll just I'll just do this chain thingy here and and I'll be good and I'll just make a square and then I'll just sew the squares together and, and it'll be good it'll be good it'll be good we can do that so <laughs> I try to work within my limitations and since it's something I just kind of started dicking around with so last night was like my first attempt at crocheting I think this was like the third square I tried to do it's not terrible but there's definitely spots where I'm like that hole looks a little big I think I missed a stitch so and the yarn I was trying to do this with wasn't probably ideal for very first time crocheting but um yeah I'm not sure if I quite did it right I don't know um, I probably didn't but it made something so I'm like okay we'll go with it but you know it is what it is it's just gonna be for me anyway like I can knit enough to, to get a half-ass scarf done if it comes down to it so but uh I'm more of a paint person than anything. So we've done some Bob Ross painting with the oil paint stuff. Um, 
it's okay it takes forever to dry though for me because I have to put it in containers that have lids on them to keep the cats from getting into them we did drill air holes in the sides of the containers but it still took months for some of those to dry and I wish I was kidding I'm like we really drilled a ton of holes in the side of the containers but it was it was a pain um, and okay cool you're still standing wonderful um, and I was seeing a lot of people do all kinds of stuff with with the Bob Ross things on um, on YouTube with the, oh, we're gonna follow it blindfolded. We're gonna just listen and not watch what he's doing. Um, we're gonna try to follow this tutorial and that tutorial, but, and I've seen somebody try to follow along. I've seen people try to do it with acrylic paint, um, which, you know, you can do. It's not gonna look the same entirely, but it is possible. Um, I've seen people even follow along with his tutorials using cake frosting, of all things, um, which I found kind of weird and bizarre, but I was like, okay, sure, I guess. But what I hadn't seen anybody do was try to follow one of his tutorials with needle felting. And I was like, hey. <gasps> Uh-oh. Where did it go? Um. What's on? So I need you to carefully put some shoes on. Okay, I've got my shoes on. And I need you to come over. And I need you to take my flashlight. Uh huh. What am I looking for? You're looking for the end of the needle. Oh God. It snapped and flew past my face towards my shoulder, and I don't know where it went. I don't know if it landed on me, on the floor. Oh God, you've got so much glitter here too. Or on my shirt. I don't know where it went. I didn't feel it hit me, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Oh dear. I was waiting for that sucker to snap though. I didn't even feel like I'd hit the... Uh, how long is this missing piece? Um... Half inch? Uh, it might be in my sh the folds of my shirt. You didn't feel it hit, did you? No. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like, I didn't hear it hit the chair oh, either. Jesus, hon. Well, it's not like I wanted it to go in that direction. What the heck? Alright, so we're gonna stop there because we have to go find the needle. And we we're going to have to stop for oh dinner anyway. God. So um, hopefully I'll give you an update on Twitter when we find it and where we found it. So don't forget to follow there. Um, I was waiting for that needle to break, though, because it has it, it's been bending for quite a while. Oh, so, did oh, did you find it? No. Piece of grass. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, I have to go help him find that. Uh, and, um, so I can move your chair so yeah, because I don't, it might actually be by my butt so I don't know um, so yeah so thank you guys for hanging out with me um, good luck with your Christmas project or your socks or whatever you decide to work on tonight and um, I'll try to be back tomorrow night to work some more on the dyno uh, we'll see how scheduling goes um, if not then I'll see you guys on Thursday so until next time follow the social links below uh, have a good one get ready for your holidays stay safe and have a good week guys